So today what we're going to be doing is installing nzb-get. And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. So welcome to TechnoDad Life where we simplify technology. And today what we're going to be doing is installing the nzbget container uh, in a Docker. And we're going to be showing you how to set that up so then you can use Usenet. And so Usenet is basically one of the older parts of the internet where people not only can post information but pictures and also uh, music and videos. The difference between Usenet and say something like BitTurn, Usenet is all based on private servers and so all your information is encrypted and you have to pay for it also. The other difference is that it is much faster than BitTurn. So as always, please only download things that you have copies of already. So let's get started. So this is what nzbget looks like and what I'll do at the end of this video is show you how to set it up, but first let's install it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to our Open Mini Vault server, go into OMV Extras, Docker, and then Open Web UI. Log into Portainer and then go to Stacks and Add Stack. Next, what we want to go do is go to Linux server slash nzbget on Docker Hub. And what we're going to do is scroll down to the supported architectures. And here we can see that it's x86. And then we have ARMHF for our Raspberry Pis. Scroll down further. We're going to go to the Docker Compose section and then simply copy this and go to Portainer Stacks and then paste that in. And now let's start at the top. So we want to name this nzbget. And so any place that you see red in the Compose file, that means you have to change something. And here it's getting rid of the quotes. And so the next thing we want to do is change our PUID and our PGID. So for Open Media Vault, PUID stays at 1000. And if you have a user already, PGID is 100. Change our time zone to whatever time zone you are in. I'm America slash New York. And then for paths, so we, if you set your OMV up as per my directions, then you'll have an app data folder, a downloads folder, and a media folder. And so what we need is our direct path to our folders. And so we'll click next to relative path, click on columns, click absolute path, expand this out. And so then this area right here under absolute path is your absolute path. Oops, it's even longer there. So what you need to do is copy this, and there's a couple ways you can do this, but one is you can right click. If you're in Chrome, click inspect. And then over on the right hand side here, your absolute path will show up. Double click on that and then copy. And then what I do is then I paste it in a word processing program so then I can use it later. Go back to Portainer and then where it says path to data, you can paste that in. And so now there is our server name slash app data. And then we're going to at the end of app data put slash nzb gets. So what this will do will create an nzb get folder for our configuration in our app data folder. So next what we want to do is we want to do the same thing for our downloads folder. So if we go back to Open Mini Vault and we right click, inspect, there's the path for our downloads folder. We double click that and then copy that. Go back to Portainer, paste that in where it says path to downloads. And then if we scroll down, we can uncheck enable access control and then click deploy stack. And so this will take a few minutes so you can go outside and enjoy the sunlight. Now, if we 
Look at our stack. Now we have an NZB get stack and we go to containers and our NZB container is running. And if we click on logs, scroll down and you can see it started running. So to access NZB get, we need to copy our IP address, open a new tab, paste that in, put colon 6789 and then hit enter. And so now we're at NZB get. And so next what we'll do is we'll just spend a little time setting it up so you can use it. And so first thing you need to do is get a Usenet account. And so I'll link, leave a link for Usenet server. I find it's the fastest one for me. Once you sign up, they'll send you an email with the uh, different information uh, to that we're going to be using to put into NZB get so so first you have to get an account Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to click on settings We're going to go to new servers and so what we're going to do here is add some servers so this is server one yes and so why there people add more than one server is say uh, a certain file. So NZB files are can usually in parts and sometimes one part is missing and then so you can't use the file. And so then people have uh, used backup NZB servers where they just buy sort of chunks of data like gigabytes of data uh, for like 20 bucks for the year or something like that which if they're missing a file, they can get it from a different server from a different provider. And so you want to check the providers. And so what I suggest you do is go to the Usenet server or Usenet uh, slash Reddit. And on Reddit, you'll find the different providers and who is related to who and who the best alternative provider would be for you. And so we go down to name and we just put in our name of our provider the level will stay the same options stay the same group stays the same so host name of the server is the address that they gave you in your registration email so mine is news.usenetserver.com port if you want it encrypted is 563 i suggest you always do that put in your username and your password click on encryption so next press test connection and connection successful. And then in the bottom left, click save all changes. Then that will refresh. Now go back to Usenet server, go to the search page. You want this to go to max. So it has the maximum search range. Then here we're going to type in Ubuntu and then click search. And if we scroll down, we have some Ubuntu's here. And to download the NZB get, you click on the green arrow. And so the NZB has been downloaded. You go back to NZB get, click on add, grab the NZB file, drop it over add local files, then click submit. And there you can see the file starts downloading immediately and you can see it's very fast and only takes about a minute to download the file. So NZB get is a super fast way to download any files that you need to have backup copies of. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.